Hey guys, welcome to Bookish Islander. My name is Juan. Today I'm going to be reviewing Nightwood by Juna Barnes. Okay, Juna Barnes was an American artist and writer who mostly lived in Europe. Um, she's most famous for having written Nightwood, which came out in 1936. Nightwood is now well known as a lesbian cult classic and also as a major work of modernist literature. What do I think of Nightwood? Nightwood is the book that I've most recently read. In fact, I only finished it yesterday. Um, it was at times frustrating. It was at times maddening. It was full by bad writing and the structure was all over the place. So let me unpack that and then tell you why I think you should read it. What? So I'm saying you should read a book that I didn't enjoy? Yeah, I'm glad I read it and I think you'd be glad to read it too. Okay. So, uh, modernist literature. Okay, so I'm talking here Virginia Woolf, I'm talking here James Joyce, etc. Nightwood um, belongs in a group of the most accessible works of modernist literature. So if you're into modernist literature, or if you want to get a foothold in modernist literature, I think Nightwood, it's a good place to start. Um, it's a lot more accessible than many other works of modernist literature, and I said that having read and loved a lot of Virginia Woolf's work, for example, and some of Jane Joyce's too, although I haven't read Ulysses yet. Um, okay, lesbian literature. If you're interest, in, interested in LGBTQ plus literature, uh, representation, depictions of same-sex relationships in literature, Nightwood is a must. Nightwood was one of the first published books, major published books in the English language to depict the uh, love relationship between two women. So if you're interested in that again, you should read Nightwood. But how about the bad writing and how about the structural problems? Okay, bad writing. Um, Barnes writes in very long sentences sometimes. And, I mean, the book has some good writing and some pretty terrible writing. At her worst, she writes in long convoluted sentences that are really hard to understand and you might have to read the same paragraph a few times before you get to what she's trying to say and sometimes you won't even get it, even if you read the, pa uh, the paragraphs uh, a few times. Why is that? Um, I think reading, her, reading this book I thought that some of the sentences read like they had been translated, badly translated, from German. They're not, I mean, she, for all I know, she wrote in English and I, for, all, for all I know, she didn't speak a word of German. I mean, the book is set in Vienna, uh, that's in Austria, as you know, um, and they speak German there. Um, so I don't, I don't think she translated anything, but I, I don't know if because she had lived in Europe for so long, or she was living in Europe when she wrote this book. Other languages kind of influenced her syntax, or I, I don't know if she was trying to be experimental, or I don't know if this is just idiosyncratic to how she, who she was and how she saw the world, but her writing is convoluted and it's not the easiest to understand. In parts, I mean, you'd be glad to know that most of it is easy to understand, that's why I said that this novel was one of the most accessible uh, modernist works. Definitely one of the most accessible I've read, personally. Um, what else? The structure. Okay, if you've read modernist literature, if you've read Wolf and Joyce, etc., <clears throat> excuse me, you'd probably be aware of stream of consciousness and experimental structures and non-conventional plot structures and so on. Okay, this book has some of that, but not all of it. It doesn't have at least I didn't detect any instances of uh, stream of consciousness and that makes it a little bit easier um, but the structure is all over the place the story seems to shift focus from between different characters for no real reason that kind of like sh those shifts don't cohere into a whole uh, the book starts off talking about some Jewish guy in Europe and then moves on to a doctor then moves on to uh, some women and, and you don't really understand, well, I, at least 
unless I missed something big, I didn't understand why she kept shifting the focus like that. It, it felt to me that it was some kind of improvisation, although she could have done it on purpose. I, I, I don't know, that's up to you to decide. Um, but that can make it hard to, to read, in, in, not really hard to read, but frustrated because you might, as I did, you might start reading the book and get into the story that she's telling about this Jewish guy and then she drops it and you're like, well, why? I was enjoying that. Why are you now talking about something completely different? What is the connection here? Um, but if you enjoy non-conventional plots, then you, you might like this. And, and that is why I'm not going to talk here about the plot. I, I don't think it's that relevant and it would be really hard to talk about the plot anyway. Um, so yeah, that's Nightwood by Juna Barnes, a book published in a novel published in 1936. Have you read it? Would you want to read it? Has this review made you want to read it or, or, or put you off reading it? Hopefully not. Uh, anyway, I hope you uh, write a message, I mean, uh, comment with your thoughts. And I hope I'll see you soon in another one of my videos. So goodbye for now. Take care.